So joining me now, I'd like to welcome in Deborah Hickson. Deborah lost her husband, Chris, in the shooting. He was Stoneman Douglas' athletic director and wrestling coach. Uh, Deborah, thank you so much for speaking with me again. Such a significant day. What does it mean to you to see this building finally come down? Uh, you know, it's another another step towards um, healing. Toward I don't, I don't really want to say closure because I don't know if we'll ever really get to the closure piece of it, but definitely a step towards healing. And officials, you know, we mentioned at the top, had ordered it remain until the gunman's trial ended in 2022. Do you think it should have come down sooner? Um, no, I, I understand the purpose. And actually, in the last year or so, we the families have actually walked through a lot of legislators to kind of tell that story in a place where they can actually see what we're talking about in terms of how to make schools safer structurally, right? The doors, the, the, the type of window that's in there, the construction material that is made. So, you know, you can tell somebody something, but when they see it in that context, it means something different. And, you know, hopefully we'll see a lot of changes legislatively in terms of standards for schools, safe buildings, and um, some other things. Right. Definitely uh, an attempt to make things better there, Deborah. The school shooter was sentenced to life in a prison. Are you satisfied with that, you know, as much as you can be by his sentence? No, you know, at the, if there was ever a case where someone was premeditated, did something of this nature premeditated, um, you know, I, it, I, we were not obviously satisfied with that. But at the end of the day, I promised my family that when the trial was over, however it ended, it was over for us. We weren't going to think about him anymore. We weren't going to worry about anything and you know along those lines and we were going to move forward with our life and honor chris in a way that he would be proud of us absolutely so tell me about your husband chris um so christopher was always the biggest person in the room he was um sarcastic <laughs> he was um bigger than life he was friendly if he would invite 10 people over for dinner if he happened to run into them and and say hey why don't you come over for dinner um you know he just made you feel like you were part of his family from the second that you met him but he was also a beacon of safety you know he always was concerned about the surroundings, what was around him and making sure things were safe. So you always felt like you were safe when you were you were with him. And he was a great dad. He was so good with our special needs son, Corey, and our older son, Tommy, with, um, you know, different sports and, and things of that nature. And he was always my biggest critic and my biggest cheerleader. And, you know, it's really hard to move forward Absolutely. when you lose a life partner. Absolutely. And I know with Father's Day coming up, you know, I would imagine it has to be tough. And every, you know, everything is, is just trying to find this new normal. Uh, Deborah, with the building coming down, you know, for, for people who don't live there, we talk about it, but we don't have to drive past it every day. We don't have to. It's, it's not really a part of, of our lives, so to speak. Ha yeah. Did you have to readjust just everyday things that you would do with your life? Did you, you know, find a new route to the grocery store or something? Well, so I don't live in Parkland, so mm -hmm. I also um, didn't have to necessarily experience driving by that building every day. But as a school board member, I would go to MSD often for different school things. So, yeah, you have to put yourself in a different mental space to be able to just function while you're there because, you know, you walk towards the building and you remember the videos that you saw and all the testimony in the trial. And it's like a little silent movie that runs over and over in your head about what happened that day. And being right next to the building is obviously you know, difficult to turn that movie off. So I know that I will be glad not to have to look at it again. And honestly, when they're done with that space, I want it to be a vibrant, vibrant place where people remember the activities that those 17 people that were taken from us loved, soccer, 
ROTC, the band, football, you know, any of these things. I want the space to be alive. I want it to be filled with laughter and love because I don't want people to remember how Chris died. I want them to remember who he was when he was alive. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.